Welcome to the show, sir. We are a show full of diversity, and we try to enlighten the youth, and especially new Canadians, through our newspaper, through our television show, that they should understand or they could understand the system better and try to play a positive role while understanding it and which is beneficial for everybody, the society in general. So once again, I welcome you and uh, on record, I would like you to introduce yourself, sir. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Władysław Lizon. I'm the member of parliament for Mississauga East Cooksville and I'm very, very proud to represent the, uh, this riding in the federal parliament. Thank you, sir, once again. In the beginning, I would want to know a bit about you, that what brought you into politics or limelight or in the beginning as a community leader, what inspired you and how this all started? Well, for those that uh, don't know, I'm an immigrant to this country. I grew up, I was born, raised and educated in, the po in Poland what, uh, at the, in the communist era. Uh, and uh, I uh, was part of the solidarity movement in Poland in the 80s. Uh, I took part in strikes when they introduced martial law to crush the movement in 1981. But eventually in 1985 I left Poland. I uh, uh, lived in uh, the US for three years and then I came to Canada and I came to Mississauga and I've lived in Mississauga ever since and became a Canadian citizen. And uh, I, I was working in marble business, uh, uh, managing business for someone else and I opened my own. I am married, uh, I have two children, three grandchildren, I'm very, uh, very uh, proud uh, grandfather of three Canadian-born uh, grandchildren. And uh, of all my life, I, uh, uh, that's the way I was brought up. We always did volunteer work back in Poland, and it's in my blood. Therefore, uh, after coming here, I did get involved in uh, non-for-profit uh, charitable organizations, uh, both Canadian, but mostly in the, of course, Canadian-Polish community. Uh, and eventually I became a president of the Kennedy Polish Congress in Mississauga uh, in 2000, in the year 2000. I was uh, the president for five years to, until 2005, and in 2005 I became the national president of the Kennedy Polish Congress, uh, and uh, I was uh, the president until 2010. And this is basically what brought me to politics, community involvement, uh, uh, dealing with uh, our representatives um, uh, in government on issues related to, to the Kenyan Polish community and into the community in general, eventually uh, developed a way that I decided to serve people on a larger scale and uh, decided to run for political office. And I did run, and it's uh, two days ago was exactly one year since people of this riding Mississauga East Cooksville put trust on me uh, and, and elected me as the representative to the federal uh, parliament, to the House of Commons. That's great. <coughs> and I congratulate you on completing the first year of this government in general. But bringing back or coming back to the people of your riding in particular, you have a very diverse riding. Yes. It's people from different ethnic backgrounds. So how do you manage to cope up with all that and try to understand their culture? Do you meet them on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or how does that work? Well, uh, uh, all Mississauga, I think Mississauga is uh, f uh, probably the most diverse uh, city in, in, uh, well, in Canada for sure, but maybe in the world. And we have uh, here uh, communities, people from uh, probably 70 uh, f different countries. Uh, and uh, of course, um, uh, we uh, we have to, uh, and I, as uh, as the federal um, uh, f MP, have to represent everybody equally. Absolutely. And uh, of course, understanding, you know, what binds us together is we're all Canadians. We live here, and we have to work together for the better future of our country because that's what, uh, what would be left to our 
children, to our grandchildren. That's what immigrants have done over four generations. They came here, they contributed to building of this country uh, for the better future of their children. You see, most uh, uh, of uh, immigrants uh, leave their respective countries to make a better life. It's not an easy decision. It's, uh, you know, it, it, uh, to, uh, to leave uh, what you have, many people leave their careers, and what drives them? They want a better future for their kids. Mm -hmm. People don't leave their countries with no reason. There must be a reason. They don't see the, fu uh, the, the good future for, uh, for their children. There could be economic reasons, yeah. security there reasons, reasons different, different educational reasons. reasons, many reasons. But I understand that. Whatever the reasons are, even if they're economic reasons, that, that drive to make a better life for future generations. Absolutely. That's what drives. Wrong with that. That's what drives immigrants, and it takes special people to be strong enough to leave and come to another country. And uh, you know, I, I know from my own experience. You know, people come here. I came here. You know, you come with expectations, and what you uh, uh, see here, it's not always what you would expect. You know, some things are different. You know, uh, people leave professional careers. They then they find out oh, why wow, it's gonna take five, ten years, sometimes maybe more, to uh, regain your diploma and 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 work as an engineer, doctor, a dentist, uh, uh, of, uh, or of a teacher. You know, but what I have to say that in this country, and I'm speaking to, uh, from uh, my experience and looking at. Uh, friends that I've met, many people that I've met that immigrated here, how successful they are, that hard work pays off here. This country is fair to immigrants. It's fair to immigrants. Uh, uh, nothing is perfect, but it's fair to immigrants. And if someone works on it, on, on, on something, has a goal, in in great majority of cases is successful. I would agree with you on that note that nothing is perfect. There's always room for improvement, but this country <coughs> is best towards immigrants. I do agree to some extent. Coming back to... Yeah, but coming back to your question, uh, how I uh, uh, meet with... I meet uh, with, uh, with uh, different groups. I go to events. And uh, we events reach... wouldn't be considered meeting, sir. It would be an event where you no, 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 go and uh, just honor them and be out of that event. Like meeting not, them on a personal basis where we understand not, each other. Not, not only. I, uh, when I go to event, I uh, usually don't walk in and walk out. No, I because which is understandable too. Sometimes you no, folks but, have too many events to go over the weekend, and yeah, it's only fair that but you walk I, in and out we, we, at times. I reach, uh, we reach out to uh, to respective communities, uh, mostly to organizations, and uh, many many communities have uh, their organizations. I meet with them. Uh, we discuss their their issues. Uh, you know, uh, we so all, there's all a weekly meeting or a monthly meeting, or how does that work? It's in your well, office, it's, it's, it's meetings, you have some directives, well, in your writing you have meetings with different groups. I am not understanding that. Okay, and uh, have, uh, then uh, I have to be in Ottawa on days that Parliament is sitting. Usually Monday to Thursday. No, no, pa Parliament is sitting Monday to Friday, it's sitting today too. Uh, uh, but... I don't have to be on Friday unless I have what is called a duty day. Mm -hmm. Duty day means that I have to be in the parliament from uh, all day. And, uh, and, and it revolves, therefore, uh, uh, I think uh, at some point Friday would come back as my uh, uh, duty day. But if, uh, if I don't have to be on Friday, normally I come back to the riding on Thursday evening and uh, I'm always in the office on Friday uh, meeting people, going to events, and of course, then uh, there is a weekend where uh, uh, where I meet people, go to events, and there are breaks in the parliament. Therefore, I am here. I am here uh, when the parliament is not sitting every day, and that's uh, people call here, people make appointments. I go and meet uh, uh, organizations at, at uh, their places. Uh, I go to schools. You know what, uh, uh, I went to a school, a 50th anniversary of school, uh, a Florida school um, uh, here at, on Paisley, just west of uh, here, Ontario. And I was actually uh, uh, amazed by 
uh, the diversity, looking at uh, the kids performing. They were performing Indian uh, songs and dances. There were, there were people from all uh, uh, backgrounds you can imagine, uh, these young people. It's, 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 uh, it's really amazing. Uh, I was very impressed. That's how, uh, that's how I work. And there's always uh, room for, uh, uh, I think, uh, for, for uh, more contacts, uh, improvement in, in what I'm doing. And of course, I reach out to people through my, uh, through my uh, mail, uh, uh, through the, uh, <coughs> what is we call householders. It's, um, it's like a newspaper that goes to every household. I write letters, uh, we receive emails uh, that, that uh, have on issues that uh, we respond and we look after. There was many ways. Now the communication is, is so great, uh, you know, within a second you can write an email and, and it's here. I do understand and appreciate that. Like coming back again to your writing, your writing is very diverse and it is felt a general idea as a general idea, not only your writing in consideration, overall, Mr. Saga, Brampton, or GTA in general, that race relations are at times not in par with each other. People fail to understand each other. Do you think there is a need for different communities to understand each other yet more better, or everything is fine? You know what? Uh, um I tell you something, it's, there's always need to understand each other because sometimes, you know, sometimes uh, people, uh, f let's say, fear other culture, but the reason is they don't know enough about, uh, about them. That's why it's even important in the respective community between neighbors to know each other, to, uh, 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 to talk to each other. You know what, we became in many cases uh, uh, communities that People are very they keep themselves in a very private, uh, close environment. A close knit environment. Yeah. How many uh, neighbors never know the next door neighbor? And it's even uh, uh, if, uh, you know it, it reflects even on the safety of the neighborhood because it, it's so much. I always. Uh, um, uh, I greet the, the neighbors. I mean, uh, where I uh, live now, I've lived there for 17 years, and my next uh, door neighbors changed, I think, three times. But I, I, I know them all. I know people on the street. Therefore, uh, when I'm away, they even watch uh, my house, and, and that's how it works. They, they tell me, oh, someone was uh, 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 here uh, uh, watering your flowers. That's how I, I ask the person. Therefore, therefore there is, uh, even this kind of interaction is important. But you know what? We don't have here what uh, you would see in the States where, where uh, there is a problem with, uh, with, the, with the race. There are some neighborhoods that are, uh, are very, very poor and, and uh, if only uh, people of, of a certain background uh, live there. We don't have it here. We, if, uh, we don't have problems with, uh, you know, I was not with mentioning any problem when, that with, I even with, know of, uh, but my point is like you already admitted that race relations or understanding each other is uh, very important should be improved and is very important yes, and very at important. times it does lack. Yes. what in particular you have in mind for your writing in particular to improve or bridge these gaps i would call it you know what uh, uh, f uh, i think the the best uh, 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 would be people interacting with each other, organizations uh, uh, working together so on people issues. people on individual level don't have resources. Governments have resources to organize such events. Let it be a municipal government, a provincial government, or a federal government. So people individually don't have resources to hold such events. So what in your mind is the remedy? Well, but, uh, but there are resources that are provided by, by, the all, governments. by all levels of governments and also uh, the, you keep in mind that many communities are very successful of uh, raising funds for uh, for their own uh, cause. This is not uh, uh, something that doesn't happen in 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 this country and, and, and in this uh, city. Name an People organization that is interested in bridging race relations in your writing. My writing. Yes, sir. Well, look at uh, uh, Safe City Mississauga. It's a great organization and, and works together with, for the safety, works with the police, with, uh, works with uh, other uh, uh, groups 
to uh, work together for, for our safety. It's very important that the police has a, a community Sir, support. It is very important. Yes. I'm trying to understand bridging the gap amongst race relations. What such organization is in your mind or you are working with or you plan to work with? Well, I tell you something. I was the president of the Kenyan Polish Congress, and I did work with uh, with other organizations uh, okay. in the, in Mississauga and in Canada, with, uh, Jewish, Muslim, uh, uh, Serbian, uh, uh, Croatian, Ukrainian. Uh, we all work together on 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 certain things, and I think there is a lot of r open room for people to work together, for organizations to work together. There are uh, uh, in Mississauga. I, I should say in Peel, there is uh, a Peel Multicultural Council okay. that, uh, that uh, many uh, ethnic organizations are member of. Therefore, there is, uh, there is a platform where these issues can be addressed. But, but on personal level, on the neighborhood the, 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 uh, 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 side, people, individual people should really interact with each other. We should be more open. We shouldn't be close and afraid of each other. We should be open to each other. I completely agree with you. And Mrs. Saga is again hosting an event in very near future, in the end of May, by the name of Kara Saga. That's right. Where That's we were at an event yesterday also. So you, at your personal level, are making an effort to bridge the gap. That's my understanding That's from correct, the conversation. Yeah. So that is a good sign. Now coming back to the issue of youth, our youth and across the board I talk, youth is youth, we are not going to separate them amongst communities. They don't seem to be very interested in our political system and they seem to be lacking behind. Even at some points, they have their own world, we don't seem to understand them. What are you trying to, as a father, you are a grandfather, you are a father, do you think there is a need to bridge the gap amongst the youth also with us? Well, you know what, uh, I always, when I look at uh, today's uh, youth and, and I look at uh, my uh, children that are grown up and my grandchildren, why well, I, I can see that it's, it's a different time, different world. However, what is important is a role of family. Let's not forget that certain things, certain basic values do not change with evolving world. We may sometimes think that if uh, uh, that with evolution we should get rid of uh, some values. No, we should keep them. Certain values should always stay and be strongly enforced. Respect to each other, respect for elders, respect for authority, discipline. You know, these are values that should, uh, that are very common across each uh, cultures and religions. This, th this yeah. is not different. What is important is I, 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 I strongly value the uh, uh, family, the role of the family. It's very important. And the uh, role of the parents is very important in the process of bringing up uh, kids. Now we have a school. School is one of the main things, main places that forms the mind of young people. But it should work as, uh, as a joint effort by parents and educators. The results are the best. And then, you know, children, now, I know they, uh, the, uh, everybody argues that it's a uh, different world and they have computer games and they don't go out as much and there's not enough time for everything else. You know what, if, if it's organized properly, they will find time and will find interest uh, beside computer games. I have nothing against comp computer games, but uh, as, if, if it goes out of balance and, and the young uh, person spends uh, all day on, on the computer game, there is something wrong with, it, with, uh, with this picture. Therefore, uh, engaging uh, young people in activities above what they do at school, it's very important. In my view, sport is very important. There's not enough of it. Sport is very important, in my view, for 
many reasons besides uh, giving young people a fit, good, fit body. It teaches them skills that you need in life. It teaches them that when you fall, you can get up. And if you can't get up, there will be someone helping you uh, to get up. It teaches you competition. It teaches you respect for your opponent. These are skills that are very important when you get to your adulthood in your normal daily life. And you know what? And education is important. That's why I see hundreds, thousands of immigrants educating the children, because that's the way for the success. You know, and we should treat education on the same level, and some people treat sports because you know what we have children, and we always think, oh, damn, it's going to be a, a, a sports star making millions of dollars. Some make it, but we have to keep it in mind that it's a very small percentage. Most people are successful because of the education they get. They should be treated the same way. I agree. Summing up the interview, sir, I would uh, want you to give some message out to the viewers and youth in particular. And I have one last question. What do you think, or why do you think this government, your conservative government, is best for the general public? Sum it up, I give it to you. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Well, uh, the message uh, to the youth, I think uh, I think uh, I, I uh, uh, have said uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot about youth uh, and uh, how they should uh, direct their uh, activities to be successful in life. But uh, the general message, get involved. Get involved in what interests you. Besides what you have to do in school, at the university, get involved and work for a cause. And try to share what you have. Even if you have a little bit, try to share it with others. That's, that's very important. And you will be not only successful, but you will be rewarded. Now on the question why this government is the, the best for uh, this country and these people, well, it's, uh, there are many reasons, but maybe uh, uh, we don't have enough time to, uh, to probably uh, uh, speak about all of them, but the main reasons are the values. Conservative Party of Canada values and this government values are the values that we all across uh, the, the ethnic uh, uh, picture, across the uh, uh, religious background that we all share. And these are the values that I mentioned earlier. Hard work, respect uh, uh, for your country, respect for others, uh, 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 a very strong, <coughs> uh, uh, now, very strong responsibility for the economic side uh, of, of, of this country. The importance of businesses, support for businesses, support for families. It's very important that we have strong families, that we have foundations that we can build this country on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much once again, sir, for letting us in your office. God bless you. Thank you.